So, in the last lecture, we are discussing about the derivation of stiffness matrix for TLP. If you recollect, the stiffness matrix was derived column wise, we had one more degree to be derived, we will do that now. <coughs> Let us look at revisit the basics. So, we have K11 which is from the surge K31 and K51. and we have K 2 2, K 4 2 and K 3 2 and we have K 3 3 which we have derived yesterday and K 3 4 and K 4 4, we have K 5 5 and K 3 5. Now, we will have K 3 6 and K 6 6 remaining all elements which have been not marked here, they are 0. There are some special characteristics about this matrix, we will talk about that slightly later once I complete this column of derivation which is for a yaw motion. So, as we describe to derive the elements of stiffness matrix, I must give unit displacement to the jth degree and I must get the forces in ith degree, keeping all other degrees of freedom restrained. In this case, I must give unit rotation about the yaw plane and I must get the forces which are activated or influenced by the yaw motion. <coughs> so, let us try to draw the plan of a four column pontoon supported TLP. So, I should say 6 yard displacement theta 6 So, with respect to the C G, we give the rotation. So, we rotate about the y plane as the horizontal plane to give an yaw motion and we know to give this we need a force which will be actually k 6 6 and this will be counteracted by two planes let us see this one by a force of this order which can be t 0 plus delta t 6. T 6. Similarly, that is how it is rotated and we know the standard nomenclature, we call this as this may wave approach direction, we call this as P B and this as my plan length P B P L center to center and we call this distance as A. and we call this distance as b. If you look at the elevation of this, elevation of this platform, let us say initially the platform is horizontal in static equilibrium. Let us view the platform from this direction. So, this column will be 1, 2 is behind 1 this column will be 4 and 3 is behind 4. 
this may be the fill water level, this may be the design draft for this given which we call as <coughs> H bar and let us say they are connected to the teeth at the bottom and the seabed where we call this as my water depth which is small d and these are diameter of the columns. So, these are d c and of course, there is a pontoon member which can be d p, but in this case both of them are equal is the usual practice for welding comfortability. Now, imagine that this platform is having a three dimensional plane like this. I am looking at these points or the points where the teether is connected. I am drawing this plane somewhere here. This is the plane what I am looking at. I am drawing it separately. So, let us say I connect it. Let us say only one teether. When this platform yaws, when there is a yaw motion to the platform. So, the corner gets shifted, but they will happen on the same horizontal plane and the angle between them should be as same as theta 6. Okay. So, now if you look at a geometric calculation of this, let us say I have a theta, I have a theta varied and I have a normal distance. So, if I call this as my theta 6, I can call this as b and this as a which will be more or less corresponding to this a and b qualitatively. Quantitatively not because this is may be in elevation this is in plan, but qualitatively they will convey the same meaning. Okay. Let us say now the new length because you know when the platform yaws actually when the platform moves in the horizontal plane rotates in the horizontal plane the teethers will get twisted. Okay. Now, teether will definitely get a new length now. Let us call that new length let the new length of the teether be L 1. L 1 can be computed vectorially if you know the value of A and B. Okay. One can use a vector algebra to compute L 1 which will of course, a marginal value of L plus L, L plus delta L that is going to be L 1 because cable is inextensible but this L 1 will be different from L certainly. Okay. Therefore, delta T 6 is going to be that L 1 of the axial stiffness of let us put it like this the change in length minus the original length multiplied by the axial stiffness that is going to be a new tether force caused because of the yaw rotation. The moment they do this in yaw plane though it remains horizontal, but there will be some set down effect happening because of this motion. So, k 3 6 will be involved you may ask me a question how he will be invoked now any change in length any change in length will always try to either pull down the platform or release the platform which is going to happen in the heave direction okay, which we call technically as set down. Okay. Though you may, you may imagine you may not accept because yaw is going to happen in an horizontal plane anyway the platform is not heaving at all how I will get k 3 6. Any change in length will always be directly connected to heave motion there is no there is no other rescue except that heave only have to compensate this. Okay. So, k 3 6 will be invoked. So, k 3 6 of theta 6 for dimension stability can be now derived directly from the new tethers which is the original length Okay, we will take a proportion because I am looking only for the increment plus delta T naught of A e by L is it There is no A e by L because del delta T naught is already there. So, A e L so, delta T 6 will have A e by L. 
I should say delta T 6. So, 4 T 0 of the proportion of that plus delta T 6 L by L 1 oh, L by L 1 minus proportion of that L by L 1. Only the proportion will get added to my stiffness. So, K 3 6 can be now found out from this relationship because T 0 is already known and delta T 6 can be known if you know L 1. Delta T 6 can be known if you know L 1 because remaining all are known to me and L 1 can be vectorially computed if you know A and B. K 6 6 the second component will be the restoration by the moment value on the horizontal plane which will be T 0 plus delta T 6 four times of that rather the near cables will have different angle of twist the farther cables will have different angle of twist. So, one can say this is delta T 6 and this can be delta T 6 bar or dash we have already said in the previous derivation let us equate both of them ok equalize them therefore, I say take this as 4 value. I could have also written this as 2 T 0 plus delta T 6 plus twice of T 0 plus delta T 6 dash ok as we did in the last time then we equated them it becomes 4 multiplied by let us call this as new length as L 1 L 1. So, now I have K 3 6 I K 6 6 remaining all already we have discussed in the last lecture. So, I have the full stiffness matrix now. Now, we can discuss what would be the salient uh, points of the stiffness matrix. Now, one can see here k is a square matrix you can see this is a square matrix because we have got 6 by 6 it is a square matrix k has non symmetricity see k 3 1 is present, but k 1 3 is not there ok. So, k is non symmetric or asymmetric of size 6 by 6 you will see that you give unit displacement any degree 1 2 that is surge, sway, heave, roll, yaw, pitch or pitch and yaw this invokes automatically an understanding of the force in the heave degree. It means heave is strongly coupled with all degrees of freedom ok it has got a very strong coupling. Now, if you look at the diagonal band and look at the off diagonal terms whichever is present apart from the band the off diagonal terms reflect a strong coupling between various degrees of freedom. Now, one can easily see how they are coupled ok. For example, if you look at this term pitch and surge are coupled if you look at this term roll and sway are coupled and so on so forth you can easily find out the off diagonal terms will tell you what is the influence of coupling between various degrees of freedom. He however, is coupled with all degrees of freedom other than that there is a combination between certain degrees of freedom get coupling ok that can be seen from off diagonal terms. And you have seen for example, let us take, take here the change in length of the teeth tension affects of course, the buoyancy of the system because it is invoking the heave response. Heave response will cause set down, set down will alter buoyancy. So, it will of course, challenge the buoyancy of the system and if you look at all the terms available in the stiffness matrix let us say even this A and B etcetera L 1 etcetera or even earlier cases you will see that most of them are response dependent ok. So, response is not known for a given system therefore, K instantaneously is not known. Okay, K matrix is not known in the given problem that is very interesting. If you do not know K though you may know M you cannot find the frequency of the system. So, you cannot design the system actually. Okay, so, K is not known because K is most of the terms in fact, all of the terms are response dependent. If you do not know the response you do not know the K okay. and most importantly we look at for example, K 3 1 I want you to open and see K 3 1 or let us say there are cosine and sine terms available in this which are non linear. Okay, so, it has got non-linear terms right and since it is response dependent the stiffness matrix kept is keep on changing as the wave approaches the system and passes the system. So, k is not constant, but it changes with the instant of time ok. It means the platform will have a different band of frequency sweep 
from A to Z as the wave passes. Because as the wave passes, set down and heave response will be invoked. As heave response invokes, change in teeth tension will happen. Change in teeth tension will ask, will demand change in different elements of stiffness matrix. In the stiffness matrix elements changes omega change though m may not change, but m will also change I will show you m will also change. But if you identify that m is not changing k is changing omega certainly will change. Therefore, it is very very interesting as per the design conceptualization TLPs will never get into resonance band at all. TLPs will never be in resonance band at all, but then how TLPs fail that is a very interesting problem what we will talk about in this lecture. So, TLPs will not fail because of resonance because it is a sweeping omega okay? and TLPs frequency time periods if you look at if you look at the periods which we remember we already said that let us say T surge T sway and T yaw because most these are all on horizontal planes. Okay? These two are displaced in this rotation they have in the horizontal plane surge sway and yaw they are on horizontal plane it is very complaint about this. Okay, complaint means highly flexible, flexible means large period. Okay, so, it is about 80 to 120 seconds very very high. If you talk about the on the other hand the contrary the design let us say time periods of let us say he time period of roll and time period of pitch. If you take these values they will happen in the vertical plane because roll is about rotation about x axis and y axis and he is in the vertical plane. So, one is highly complained about the horizontal plane, the other is very stiff about the vertical plane. The moment I say it is stiff about the vertical plane, the period is going to be very low. This will be within 2 to 5 seconds. So, there is a drastic bandwidth between the flexible frequencies and stiff frequencies in a given system. That is why it is called as an hybrid platform. Okay. And if you look at the real wave which is coming in the system in any C state, starts from 6 seconds to of 20 seconds, they will never be in the band of TLP at all. So, TLP will have no excitation frequency matching without the natural frequency even though the frequency of the TLP does not change with k. Okay. However, in this case since k is response dependent we have just now saw k invokes change in omega therefore, TLP will never be in a resonance band with that of the excitation frequency. Okay. Then how TLP is actually fail? Okay. That is an interesting question, but this is very important that they will not. So, you have got one set of degrees of freedom far away from the bandwidth of excitation period, one set of frequencies or the periods which are very low from the excitation period. Therefore, they will have no uh, possibilities of having a resonance tuning with that of the excitation frequencies or excitation forces. Now, let us talk about the mass matrix. As usual you know mass is also going to be 6 by 6 and we know that we are going to lump the mass of the whole system at the point where degrees of freedom are marked or measured. In this case I am measuring degrees of freedom all at the CG point on the deck. I can measure anywhere I want. No moment I do that then I have got to lump all the mass calculated at the CG of the deck. Though I have shown here in plan deck as a point it is a 3 level deck let us say you have to hypothetically imagine that there is a point in the deck plane where the CG or the mass moment of inertia of the whole system is getting concentrated. At that particular point I am measuring surge sway heave roll pitch and yaw which I have been marking for all my derivations. Okay. So, mass matrix as usual will be 6 by 6 square and we know it is going to be diagonally dominant because the reason is I am lumping the mass at the degrees of beta where I am marking therefore, half diagonal terms are generally 0. Okay. So, let us say m 1 1 or let us say m 1 m 2 m 4 4 m 5 5 and m 6 6. This is what you generally encounter in any structural system where the degrees of freedom are lumped at the mass where or the mass is lumped at the point where degrees of freedom are measured in a given system in dynamics. However, in TLP you have got again one more complication from the mass matrix also. There are few off diagonal terms represented in mass matrix also. I will come to that how they are coming. Now, first let us see how do we compute m11 for example or let us say m22 or m33. Then nothing but mass moment of inertia 
or second moment of area of all the objects present in the system with respect to x, y or z axis aligned. So, one can easily compute this ok. Sigma a x square bar by sigma a x where x is the distance for surge that is m 1 1. Similarly, sigma a y bar by a y bar square what I will get as m 2 2 and m 3 3. I can easily find out this ok. So, if I really wanted to find out m 4 4 which is mass moment of inertia about the roll degree of freedom I must say it is m uh, and fortunately you will see for a symmetric balance system in a static condition or equilibrium you will see that all these three mostly will be equal to same value simply m there will be no variation between this. Now, one can ask me a question why there should not be a variation there will be a marginal variation in heave because of the top side details ok. However, the variation will not be much it is varying only about 5 to 10 percent. So, for practical cases one can say for example, a given story in a building it is a 10 story generally you see the mass is lumped at every floor the analysis is like this you want to measure the mass here half of this floor half of this floor which is equal to one floor height. So, this mass is m 1 similarly m 2 m 3 m 4 will be all same. However, if you see this it is going to get only half. So, it is going to be half of the existing mass this complication is there in buildings also wherever you lump a mass where you are measuring the degrees of freedom this complication idealization was there earlier also. In this case also there is a variation heave mass will be slightly different it is more than these two, but the variation has been seen only by a margin of 5 to 10 percent ok. So, let us hypothetically understand that all these three will be equal to m a single value which can be computed geometrically ok. Now, I want to look for m 4 4 which is here this will be nothing but this mass multiplied by r x x square versus r x x the radius of gyration which is i x x by a root of that ok. I x x I already know because for finding out m 1 1 I wanted i x x I already know that area also I know ok. So, I can easily find m 4 4 similarly m 5 5 will be m r y by square and m 6 6 will be m r z z square and we all agree the value of radius of gyration can be also experimentally obtained why it is easy in this case because using a simple flotation statistics of this problem you can always find the radius of gyration for the system ok. So, one can easily obtain these values. So, I have all my values ready for mass matrix. Now, the question is when I have all my values ready I will have added mass also ok. I will have added mass because the body is submerging partially I will have added mass because the wave is not as horizontal line as you see wave is actually a crust and trough. So, there will be some added mass coming because of the crust some added mass deleting because of the trough and so on. So, I have to account for that. So, I will put that as m 1 1 plus m a 1 1 added mass at the first value which will be pi d square by 4 d c stands for the diameter of the column member c m minus 1 why c m minus 1 I am taking this an added mass in the left hand side actually added mass is the force coming from the right hand side. So, c m minus 1 into rho of course, that is the density ok. Since, I am looking for added mass moment of inertia I must say x double dot such is that ok. Right. So, if you really wanted to find out m a 2 2 there is no m a 2 2 there is m a 3 3 for a unidirectional wave I am talking about unidirectional wave only. So, there is no sway, but surgeon heave of coupled already we have seen that set down and offset therefore, m a 3 3 will be there which will be equal to again pi d square by 4 c m minus 1 rho x double dot heave ok. So, I get these terms. So, here I will add m a 3 3 star and star star are nothing but the values what I get from here which are added mass terms and just now we saw heave is coupled to other degrees of freedom. In fact, heave is coupled to all degrees of freedom we saw that in stiffness matrix also. Therefore, whenever I have an added mass in heave I must have this coupling in pitch. When I have an added mass in surge I must have a coupling in pitch also because surge and pitch are coupled ok and heave is anyway coupled with surge 
I mean with pitch is coupled with all degrees of freedom. So, I must have the reflection of these values on m a phi 1 and m a phi 3 whereas, heave and pitch are anyway coupled and pitch and surge are however coupled we know that. Okay? Right. So, remaining all other terms will be 0. So, let us get these terms first m a phi 1 and m a if you really wanted to find out the additional mass moment of inertia because of phi 1 is nothing but added mass moment of inertia in pitch degree due to added mass moment of inertia in such degree. How do you get that? <coughs> How do you get this term m a phi 1? Yeah. We if you look back in module 1, we did a problem. I wanted to actually derive a step from mass matrix for a beam like this. We gave a unit acceleration here, we found out the mass terms. Similarly, you can find this as well. Okay, if unit acceleration in 1 degree and find the phi for unit acceleration. If instead of unity, if it is the value given to you from here, multiply this with this, you will be able to get m a phi 1. Similarly, m a phi 3 also. will be added mass moment of inertia in which degree of freedom due to added mass moment of inertia in heave degree. So, here it is heave, it is switch. So, kind of one can easily find out this. Now, you have got a classical problem in mass matrix. Mass matrix will be diagonally dominant as general in all other mass matrices, but the off diagonal terms present in mass matrix will make the mass matrix unsymmetric. Therefore, mass matrix cannot be diagonalized because then you lose these terms. Okay? So, you have to handle mass matrix full, you have to handle stiffness matrix full because it is asymmetric, you cannot band it. Therefore, the solving equation of motion with having full mass and full stiffness matrix which are response dependent how m a phi 1 m a phi 3 will have a very buoyancy a submergence effect which is again dependent on the wave condition. So, there is some r h s dependence on this right hand side dependence on this in the mass matrix. Okay. Now, the question comes how do we start with the problem because k is response dependent I do not know k mass is having r h s right hand side equation of motion dependent therefore, I do not have mass also complete. How do we start with the solution of equation of motion? Okay. So, look at the equation of motion here m x double dot c x dot k x is equal to f of t. We derived m, we derived k, we, we will now discuss about quickly c. Quickly c will be the Rayleigh dependent matrix. Anyway, the mass matrix is lumped at each degree of freedom. The presence of off diagonal terms will show that contribution of added mass due to the hydrodynamic loading coming from that. Loading is attracted only in surge, heave and pitch degrees of freedom being unidirectional way we already know that. The damping matrix what we generally use in TLP is a relay damping which is proportional to mass and k both. One can ask me a question why I should take mass and k both proportional in this case because you know either k nor I mean or m will not represent the true behavior of the uniform distribution of modal participation in all the degrees of freedom. One can ask me a question do you have to truncate the degrees of freedom? All of them are important because in this case we are having strong coupling between one and the other. Okay, so, I must have all omegas and all periods and all mode shapes and all frequencies. So, there is no question of truncation coming here though there are only 6 in number, but still there is nothing like a fundamental frequency in TLP okay, because the design is such a manner that the frequencies are two sets actually. Okay, so, we must have all the values. Okay. In that case I must use uniform distribution of damping. So, I should recommend Rayleigh damping. We already have a enough idea about Rayleigh damping we already said that. So, one can compute the Rayleigh damping ratios easily and solve this problem. So, when we talk about solution of TLP or any other dynamic system using new mass beta integration method, I will come to that particular point later. Let us now talk about an interesting problem where how TLPs will otherwise fail because now you see the system is designed in such a manner if the teeth pull off they will afloat, if they are got to be let us say position restrained then you ballast it and de it. So, 
uh, commuting or let us say transporting or uh, erection, commissioning, decommissioning becomes very simple except that is a very massive system of 90 meter, 100 meter size. You need large vessels and boats to tow them from location A to B. However, it was comparatively easy with respect to that of other structures that are fixed more or less. Okay? So, that is the idea here. But the very serious problem in this case is since the static equilibrium is always challenged, one must understand the basic problem in TLP is that buoyancy exceeds weight by a very large amount. Okay, that is the design philosophy here. So, to equate this, we say the buoyancy force should be equal to weight plus some good amount of value which essentially comes from only T naught or let us say 4 T naught to be very specific. Okay. Now, instead of 4, if for example, you have only 3 tethers, one is cut off, you will have a terrible imbalance in static equilibrium. So, the problem with TLP is not failure, but it loses stability, it loses equilibrium actually, okay. because it is dependent on an external agency which is response dependent. You have no control on T 0, because T 0 has got delta T naught also, which is dependent on x, y, z etcetera, which we saw in the stiffness matrix. Okay. You really do not know if the, if the such displacement is very high, very large, then delta T naught will become very high. Therefore, this value can go into an unstable mode or non equilibrium setup, because you have no chance of changing W, more or less W is prefixed. Okay. And buoyancy, of course, depends on response because the moment platform space and offsets, variable buoyancy will change, FB will be invoked automatically. If they get balanced automatically, system will be in equilibrium. If they, the moment they are not getting balanced, system will become not in equilibrium. So, TLPs will fail only by that order. Therefore, here tether pull out becomes a very serious problem. Okay? Tether pull out will become serious problem. Now, how to actually look at the tether pull out problems? Tether pull out will happen only when a force excites in such a manner that teeth is getting cut. Tether will get cut only with two methods. One, you give very excessive surge so that the cable is inextensible, cable gets pulled off. The other is you already have a massive weight in heave direction. By increasing this weight by marginal 5 to 10 percent, suddenly it can invoke tether pull off. So, heave stability becomes very important. Whereas, in the original design of TLP, people thought that heave degree will not be challenged in stable equilibrium at all. So, to look at this, we are trying to impose a new kind of force at the seabed, which is a seismic force. Because seismic force has a capacity of moving the plane in all the three directions x, y, and z as well. Whereas, waves are generally unidirectional, okay, and the force at the bottom when it goes is practically 0. And the members are very thin in diameter, tethers are very, very thin compared to that of DC and pontoons, they do not attract any forces at all. Therefore, waves will not be able to cause an hypothetical pull out of the tether except by accidents of vessels. Whereas, if we impose a force at the seabed itself, this is a possibility that the tethers can get pulled off. So, a study was done on seismic analysis of TLP by myself and Gaurav in 2008, the, the paper is published in Ship and Offshore. I will quickly discuss in few minutes that how you have a full access to this paper. Please look at the library intranet and look at this paper and try to read them, but I won't really make you to get through the paper quickly why this paper, uh, study is very interesting and different. We will talk about that. It is not self propaganda, but it is a very important study in sense that how actually TLPs fail and what is the reality of this failure. There is a real case I will show you a seismic earthquake on seismic signal on Mars TLP here. So, dynamic analysis is done for a TLP under distinctly high sea waves. One can ask me a question why distinctly high sea waves should be combined with seismic force. It is a very natural geographical phenomena. Seismic waves are created only when the sea waves are distinctly high. There is a geographical interconnectivity between these two. When the sea is calm, there is no earthquake. Okay? It is a very geogra it is a very interesting interconnectivity. Therefore, the worst situation is distinctly high sea wave comes and earthquake also comes what happens to TLP? That is the worst scenario, because I am looking for a pull out of the data, what happens. Okay? So, it has been considered. Now, one immediately ask a question, what do you mean by distinctly high C wave? Is it an amplitude, is it a frequency or what? So, Kreibel and uh, Alcina really said and described in literature, what do we call by a distinctly high sea surface elevation? It says it should have an 
asymmetricity both in vertical and horizontal axis. So, you have to generate the C wave schematically be a signal. It has been experimentally measured by Zhao and Kim that one can always compare these extreme C waves in the lab scale and it has been envisaged in one of the platforms in reality in mass TLP where there was an epicenter of earthquake happened. I will show you the data now. So, unfortunately no systematic model of this study was available in the literature because people never attempted to study that heave pull off can also be a problem to I mean theta pull off in heave direction can also be a problem to TLP is equilibrium. So, hence in the present study distinct high C waves using non linear kinematic wave theory was created signally artificially. Okay. So, the one spec one parameter equation of PM spectra was modified which was suggested by Pelato and Michel in 1999 and 2002 3 respectively. I will give you all the references at the end. So, now the one parameter PSN muscular spectra modified given by Pelato is shown in the screen now. So, I have this equation now where the one parameter is nothing but omega. Where omega is what we call as a modal frequency, which is in this study taken as 0.46 radians per second. Okay, and yes, e theta is the power spectral density function of the wave height given by PSN Moscovitz spectrum. Once I generate this, let us see how the spectrum looks like. Looks like. Okay. Now I want to convert this particular um, spectra into a realized uh, sea surface elevation because Krebel said the sea surface elevation should have a star, uh, acute uh, front and obtuse back okay then only the uh, wave can be called it's a distinctly high c wave so eta of t was generated when i generate eta of t i need to have the phase angle phi of i which is a random number okay i need to have phi of i so we have used the se eta, eta omega i from the previous equation substituted here for delta omega i intervals we generated signal which should now qualify a distinctly high c wave now let us see the spectrum here that is a typical pm spectrum which has been generated the sample time history of eta t has been generated from that. Now, if we enlarge one specific location of the eta t, you will see that the highlighted wave profile is a concave front and it's a convex rear. So, this qualifies that the, the wave generated thus is a distinctly high C wave. Okay, usually this kind of wave does not occur, okay, but in reality this occurred. I will show you where. So, a TLP was taken. Interestingly, this TLP had three legs only. So, there is a geometric optimization here. So, what is the optimization we talk about now? So, now we know the equation of equilibrium is F B which is 4 T naught plus W. On the other hand, if you have got 3 legs only, it is going to be 3 T naught by W plus W. So, you can either keep initial pretension same as that of the square, therefore, tension in the teeth will be reduced, or you can keep the total tension same. So, initial tension each cable will be increased. So, two optimization is possible without touching W. Why it is it touching W? Because I want the same platform with the same top side in both the cases. So, either I can keep total T naught same, so T naught per individual cable will be different, or individual T naught same, total T naught will be different. Okay, two optimizations. <coughs> so, that will change the buoyancy force. So, the study was done and three TLPs at 500, 600, and 1.2 kilometer depth were attempted, and these are all real TLPs available in literature in Gulf of Mexico. So, they have been taken and these TLPs are remodeled with three legs without equivalency of geometry and then they have been attempted to study with that of the Pace and Muscovitz spectrum in eta e, eta t and natural periods if you look at. Now, I want you to pay attention to the natural frequency of heave period which is 0.52, the, the heave period is 0.52 whereas, if you look at omega m which has been taken as an input frequency it is 0.46. So, I am trying to near resonate a case where the excitation frequency is very close to heave and when the heave is excited it will result in T the pull out. Okay. So, I am indirectly generating a condition where the frequency of excitation is very close to one of the natural degrees of freedom which is stiff in nature okay, which was not attempted earlier because people thought heave degree of freedom will not be compromised at all by any chance. Okay. So, a near resonance was attempted in heave degree of freedom which is considered to be very stiff and relay damping was used in this problem. So, force vector was generated, but there is only one change here the delta t change in tension will have two components now. One is the x of t what you already have minus x g of t where x g of t is a vector which has got contributions from the heave and the surge that is x and z components of earthquake motion. Okay, now, it has been put in the vector back and I get delta t once I get change in uh, delta t 
I will get me change in stiffness matrix. So, I am imposing earthquake signal indirectly on the platform by changing teeth tension variation. One can ask a question the platform is about 1.2 meter 1.2 kilometers away from the seabed. What is the influence of the earthquake on the platform lying at the top? So, there is no direct influence, but the influence of the earthquake changes delta t, delta t changes k and k affects my system stability or equilibrium. Therefore, I am imposing earthquake force indirectly on the superstructure by this mechanism. Okay. Once we do this, the ground motion was generated using Kanai Tazumi, we already have the spectrum, already we, have, we know this. So, omega, zeta g and s naught were the real time uh, problem uh, parameters chosen for the record. One can ask me where we have taken this from on 10 September 2006 at 1456 coordinates given there, Gulf of Mexico 250 miles away in Anna Maria, Florida, there was an earthquake and instantaneously this is the place where mass CLP is located. Okay. So, it is a real time signal generated and that signal was having peak ground acceleration velocity which was 0.25 g and 0.29 meter per second which was measured there, but the signal which is generated through this Kanai Tazumi spectrum gave us 0.25 to 0.39 g which is very close and the velocity of 0.2 to 0.3 meter per second. So, there is a close resemblance of the generated signal with that of the recorded signal of actual earthquake which happened in the epicenter where mass CLP is located, but unfortunately or fortunately mass CLP is not failed with this earthquake. Okay, that is a different story, but had to have failed how the failure would have been that is what we are trying to look at here. So, once this is done then now you see the power spectral <coughs> density of the ground acceleration now the equal time history generated from Kanai Tazumi spectrum equation motion was solved using new mass beta integration method all non linearities was considered in the analysis the results are like this. So, TLP 1, TLP 2, TLP 3 A, B and C respectively because there are 3 TLPs. 500, 600, 1200 meters depth, all of them are seen. I will show you the power spectral density functions, which is the frequency domain approach. If you look at the TLPs, you will see that the power spectral density function peaks at heave, pitch, and surge are located at specific values of 0, very close to 0, 0.7 hertz, and 1.58 hertz. It is very interesting that one of these frequencies is very close to natural frequency of the system, the 1.588 is very close to some frequency of earthquake and wave. So, the system is excited at resonance period or resonance frequency at two locations you see the peaks here. So, if you look at the let us say the top one is this in heave power spectral density. If you look at the high frequency response content this is actually pitch and this is surge. So, if you look at the pitch response it shows me three peaks one is close to 0 which is very very high the second peak is natural frequency third peak is 1.58 which is very close to the seismic forces. Similarly, heave also okay. the second peak and the third peak are very high one is occurring at the natural frequency of the system and third one is occurring close to the average of PM spectrum and Kanai Tazmi spectrum K T stands for Kanai Tazmi. So, when they are superimposed you will see that heave is getting resonated in frequency content. Now, one wants to analyze how the platform has not failed. Okay. We did a stability analysis one can plot the phase plots if the phase plots are elliptical it shows by and large that the platform is stable for a long period waves. So, the period waves came are very long therefore, the platform remains stable equilibrium platform has not failed that is the reason why it has not failed, but however importantly the teeth attention variation in cables crossed more than 45 percent 1.45 times which was beyond the acceptable limit, but teeth that still did not pull out because they were having stability in terms of a geometry. So, the platform stayed that is the reason. So, these are quick references for this particular study the paper is available in NPTEL reference of course, you can download it from your library intranet and read the paper you will have more information on this I can pack up only this much in few minutes to understand to make you to appreciate that how dynamic analysis fundamentals on TLP can be applied on a real time problem and show how let us say <coughs> non frequent forces can cause extraordinary responses in research perspective. Okay, so, dynamic analysis can be used to understand the basics of the geometric design, to understand the optimization of the geometric design and also to look at the real time failure of a real problem from the basic dynamic analysis. So, dynamic analysis can be applied in different segments. Dynamic analysis does not stop only by taking omega and phi's and try to say the mode shape truncation etcetera. I can extend dynamic analysis as a design perspective also. 
So, I can also show from the studies that the platform if it has failed, how it has, how it have failed, if it has not failed, why it has not failed. So, I can always understand post accident studies also partly from dynamic analysis if my basics on dynamic analysis is very good. Okay. That is a very interesting approach on research perspective for this kind of problem. So, if we have any questions I will have to answer otherwise I will took up I will take up the next problem on a very interesting approach on springing and ringing failures of TLPs. That is a very interesting area where people have not studied it is very seldom, but there is another application what we will have to show you on TLPs. Because why I am talking about TLPs are as I said from 80s till today TLPs are considered to be one of the promising platforms for delivery for deep waters and ultra deep waters. So, I would like to see whether they are really safe for all kind of natural phenomena which are very rare in events occurred and these are actually research based problems because this is where people invest in uh, oil companies just to know to be very certain that my platform geometry will exist and survive in all odd conditions. In all design frequent conditions it is always safe we already said that, but in all odd conditions will it really stay which is stable. One would like to know this is the research perspective in the design perspective one would like to know. So, these are all very good examples of application. Next class we will talk about springing and ringing which will happen after the break of the holidays.